Yesterday, the Milwaukee Bucks were able to prove to the league that small market teams are able to still keep their top tier talent on their roster with the Supermax contract that they gave to Giannis Antetokounmpo, paying him $228 million over the next five years that will actually kick in after this NBA season. The Bucks were also able to acquire Drew Holiday in a trade that sent Eric Bledsoe to the New Orleans Pelicans, and they did try to acquire Bogdan Bogdanovich from the Sacramento Kings, but that deal ended up falling through at the last minute, and Bogdan ended up going to the Hawks. And while the Bucks did miss out on getting Bogdan Bogdanovich, I don't think missing out on him will really prove to be fatal for the team, as Bogdan Bogdanovich as a fourth option is probably at most getting 10 to 15 shots a game, but on an average is probably actually getting more like 8 to 10 shots a game. So really missing out on him I don't think is going to be that big of a deal, especially given the fact that Dante DiVincenzo could probably fill that role. They still have Brooke Lopez. They still have some good players on that team to fill that role. Giannis is probably the best player that the Milwaukee Bucks have drafted since Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And even though he's gotten to the point that he is right now, and even though we knew it was a project to begin with, I don't think anyone in the Bucks organization could have seen Giannis winning two straight MVPs and being a guy on a team who literally uplifted this franchise from the ground up and made them a constant contender. However, I think what the Milwaukee Bucks have done, it's great that they have surrounded Giannis with talent like Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday. However, talent like Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, I don't know if even what they bring together matches what other number two threats have brought to championship teams over the past 10 to 15 years. However, even though Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday, whichever one you want to say is the number two option for Milwaukee going forward, I don't know if necessarily what they bring to the team as a number two option can really match what either any of the number two options around the league can do at their top level or any number two options have done when they've won a championship in any given year. Looking around the league, we have a lot of one, two options are, that are elite. When you look at Brooklyn, even though they haven't played a game yet, Kyrie and Kevin Durant are going to be an elite one and two option with probably Kyrie Irving being the number two option. In Philly, we have Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. In Miami, we have Butler and Bam Adebayo. In Portland, we've got Dame and CJ. In Golden State, when they're healthy, you've got Steph and Clay. There's so many tandems around the league that are 1A and 1B options. I don't know if Drew Holiday, which, like I said, either Drew Holiday or Chris Middleton, I don't know if they, as the number two option, can do what any of those guys I just mentioned could do. And Drew Holiday is a very good player. In the 2017-2018 playoffs, he averaged about 24 points per game, 6 assists, and 6 rebounds as well. And he is always going to be a defensive menace. And with the team that he's in right now, with Giannis, with Chris Middleton, with Brooke Lopez blocking shots, with guys like D Dante DiVincenzo off the bench, defensively this team is going to be towards the top of the NBA. And offensively, with guys like Giannis leading the fast break, with guys like Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton being able to hold down the front court, and, or I guess play in the front court and with guys like Giannis just being able to dominate in the post all game every game there's going to be a chance for this Milwaukee Bucks to win the championship however like I'm saying the number two option of Drew Holiday or Chris Middleton does not give them as big of a chance to win the finals as say Anthony Davis does for the Los Angeles Lakers or maybe say Bam Adebayo does for the Miami Heat or maybe, like I said, either Ben Simmons or Joel Embiid does for the Philadelphia 76ers. I love to play a game with NBA players that kind of looks at what their value is compared to how they affect their teammates, whether it be what their teammates get in free agency deals, whether it's how their teammates are traded, whether it's how their teammates play on the court with them. And when you look at the Cleveland Cavaliers, the year that they won the championship, that was the year that, you know, they had LeBron, they had Kyrie, they had Kevin Love. They had guys off the bench like Matthew Dellavedova who had pretty much earned his name in the last year's final defending Steph Curry. And Tristan Thompson had been a player on that Cleveland Cavaliers franchise for a while up to that point and had filled his role very well as a rebounder and shot blocker. However, their contracts that they earned based almost solely off the fact that they were playing with guys like Kyrie and LeBron James. I mean, Matthew Dellavedova got $40 million. Tristan Thompson got $82 million after that finals run. And I think if you were to look back on both of those contracts, Matthew Dellavedova got traded the year after he signed that contract with Milwaukee. And even though I think Tristan Thompson is a very good player for the Cleveland Cavaliers, 
at, and now at this point he's on the Boston Celtics, paying $82 million to a guy who in the modern NBA can't shoot three-pointers at a high percentage or a high rate just is not a good investment for an NBA team at this point. And even look at teams around the NBA right now, the, the NBA has gone from having a big three era to having a big two era. LeBron James won his ring with basically one other superstar player and a lot of guys around them who are good players in their own right but aren't necessarily up to the level of Chris Bosh like before with Miami Heat or like Kevin Love with the Cleveland Cavaliers or like Klay Thompson is the third option in the Kevin Durant Warriors system. The Lakers had nobody as a third option. Kyle Kuzma was maybe the closest player to that. But they had nobody that was really that third guaranteed star who was at least an all-star in his right or maybe an all-NBA player as well. So when the Milwaukee Bucks add somebody like Drew Holiday, it doesn't necessarily make sense because it doesn't fit the timeline of what other NBA teams are doing. The Philadelphia 76ers have Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid. The Nets have KD and Kyrie. The Trailblazers have CJ McCollum and Dame Lillard. The Warriors, you know, they had Clay and Steph, but now Clay is injured, of course. You know, there's teams, I mean, now the New Orleans Pelicans, they got rid of Drew Holiday. They're Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson now. And adding Brooke, or adding Eric Lopez over Drew Holiday is actually an upgrade for that, for that Pelicans team because Eric Bledsoe isn't going to be looked at as a star, all-star caliber guy as a third option who's going to demand 10 to 15 shots a game off the jump. So, you know, Eric Bledsoe paired with Zion and Brandon Ingram, in my opinion, actually, is an upgrade over Drew Holiday. So ultimately, is adding Drew Holiday and signing Giannis onto the Kumpo going to win a finals for this Milwaukee Bucks team? It can. It very well can. Off the jump, if you have an MVP player like Giannis, and if you have an all-star caliber player matched up with him like Chris Middleton, who can elevate his game a little bit more than probably what he's shown, then there's always a chance for this team to win a finals. However, they have to get through other they have to get through three other teams in the playoffs anyway. They're probably going to have to get through either any combination of the Celtics, the Raptors, the 76ers, the Heat, the Nets. And even though many people think that the East is weak, these are still very good NBA players that we're talking about. And every team on I mean, pretty much every team besides maybe the Pistons or the Cavs in the league right now has top tier talent. I know the Orlando Magic are not a very good team in terms of, you know, their metrics or whatever, but a team with guys like Aaron Gordon and a Markel Fultz who looks like he's improved and Nikola Vucevic who's been an all-star, Terrence Ross, Evan Fournier, you know, that team's got a lot of players. They could give the Milwaukee Bucks a run for their money. Any team like the Pacers who have got guys like TJ Warren and Victor Oladipo, Miles Turner and Sabonis, there's so many teams in the East that have at least two to three very good players in their own rights. And they could push this Milwaukee Bucks team, even if they lose to the Bucks in a playoff series, they could easily push that team to a six to seven game series and make it tough on them when they get to the finals, when they're going against a team like the LeBron Lakers, or maybe they're going against the Clippers with Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, or maybe they're going against the Nuggets with Jokic, Jamal Murray, and their squad. You know, this Milwaukee Bucks team is going to be run down at that point, even if they make the finals. However, I would bet my money that this Bucks team does not win a finals in the next two to three years, just because of the fact that they lack that number two top talent. But it's going to put them in the position that they've been in in the past two years, where they're looking at the team and wondering if it's enough to just say, we're going to be the number one team in the East every year, but we're not going to win a championship. Or we're going to have an okay chance to win the championship if LeBron gets hurt or if the Celtics fall out, or if the Raptors fall out, or whatever ends up happening. If they're looking at the team and saying, we need other teams to lose to be able to win, then it's probably one of the worst positions in sports to be in, because they're going to be a competitive team. They're going to win probably 55 to 60 games every single year. But I don't think that what their top-tier talent provides is enough to beat teams like the Lakers, or the Celtics, or the Raptors, or the 76ers, or maybe even the Heat, or the Nets. I just don't think it's enough. And we know what teams like the Utah Jazz who have had legends like John Stockton and Carl Malone go through their system for 10 plus years and not win a ring. When you compare Stockton and Malone to other legends of their era, they have to play second fiddle to guys like Larry Bird or Magic Johnson or MJ or Shaquille O'Neal just off the fact that they didn't win any rings. And that's just the fact of the matter in the NBA. 
you don't win any rings, your team and your players don't get brought up in the conversation. So like I said, this team is going to be a top team in the East. They're just off of what Giannis brings to the team. They're going to win a lot of games. And with Drew Holiday and Chris Middleton, they'll be able to hold it down in terms of being a number two and three option. They're going to play very well in their positions. However, like I'm saying, what they bring as a two and three option does not match what other number two options around the league or when you compare them to other teams that have won the championships in previous years. What those two guys bring is not really comparable to what those other guys brought to championship teams and to championship rosters. And mostly off of that fact, I think this Milwaukee Bucks team, if they don't end up blowing it up after two to three year stretch of not winning any championships, then it's going to be a long five years of no championships for Milwaukee. And they're going to have to probably say goodbye to Giannis after this contract. With all that being said, that's going to be the video for me. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you leave a like. If you didn't like it, make sure you dislike. Any feedback from you all at this much point, or at this point is much appreciated. Uh, if you're a Bucks fan, you probably hate me after this video, but let me know what you think about the video down below in the comment section. If you're new here, make sure you hit subscribe. If you're one of my returning 51 subscribers or what I'm at right now, then I appreciate you so much. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.